The use of any software or code to generate gold platinum without the need for you being in front of your computer is botting. Anyone suspected of botting will have their account banned. My goal for the series is to explore a bunch of different online games from the context of botting. I want to just get a whole bunch of weird and different programming experience from botting games and trying to like really nail down some algorithm skills. This first game that we're trying out is called ZOMG and it's from Gaia Online, this little really niche online community. It's been around forever, like, but it's not really a game. It's more of a old internet community. Like the forum has over 2 billion posts. It's just, it's huge. But this this flash game in it, it it's multiplayer. Um, it's got a small little community. I'm not familiar with it at all. Some of my clan friends poked me <laughs> about playing this game. It seemed really interesting to uh, play again in this in this botting context because there's some complex actions required. Since it's in Flash, you can't really do JavaScript. Right now we're using AHK, but I'm gonna get into the coding in a bit. I wanna to try to get some of the game mechanics explained first. So I'm gonna redirect you to a snippet of the conversation that I had with Satch about uh, some of the core game mechanics that we'll be using to write the bot later. So just a general thing for hotkeys. Uh, QWER, just like the would be your four DPS rings. The first four in your hotbar. And then one through four would be the second row. You're not going to use four, though, the last one, because that's just a passive ring. It's always active. Um, the, the second half, one, two, and three, if you press spacebar, oh, you can I just select something. <laughs> If you press spacebar, you'll select yourself. You can apply those buffs. The so two and three buttons wrong. will be buff rings, and the band <laughs> ring is a heal over time. So you can put that on yourself or on someone else. So if you want to target an enemy, you could either just click on it directly, or you can press shift. It'll select at random. It typically goes from closest to farthest, but it's not always the case. Okay, it works now. So I just press shift and then like Q. Yeah, you don't need to hold shift and holding it isn't gonna just like rapidly cycle through. You have to press it every time you wanna pick a target. And so there's, now... there's no cost associated with stuff, right? There is, that little blue bar next to your health on the toolbar, that's your stamina. Mm -hmm. Anytime you use a ring, it takes up a certain amount of stamina. Different rings give differing amounts and they're not listed. You just have to look at how much goes down whenever you use it. You have to be not attacking for at least two seconds to start regenerating. If you're getting attacked while you're not attacking, you'll still regenerate. As long as you're not using stamina, you can regen. Hmm. Okay, so again, at the bottom next to your stamina and stuff, you'll see that red bar that's full. Yeah. That is your rage. You can hold down one of your rings to charge up, and the different uh, tiers of it are called rage ranks. So if you max out the bar all the way, and then charge charge a ring, and then let go on an enemy. So like if we come down to this next screen here, oh, we did it fire. So if you build it up again, then you can use it. It also applies with your bandage ring and the buff rings. The buff rings give stronger buffs, and bandage is just a bigger heal over time. Now the reason why the fire rain ring went off on its own, the, the fourth slot one, is because it's just an AoE ring. You can use it at any point, you don't have to target an enemy, it's just cast in, on a radius around you. <laughs> the other ones you have to be targeting an enemy though. So we're going to skip to the end where we've already got the script pretty much in a working state, and this is like version 1 material. We're going to watch the script in action, I'm going like, to commentate on the decisions I made, and now I'm going to talk about what auto hockey is. Basically, it's just a scripting tool that allows... <clears throat> me to write something that can control the movement of my mouse. 
So like for example, here I've got click at 300, 500, or 30, 50. And it also allows me to do things like send keyboard strokes. So this is sending the R key. And if you remember R um, corresponds to this particular uh, ring. That's like the basic tools that we're gonna use to automate this boss, um, which is known as, I think it's Buzzsaw. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the boss's name is, but that, that's not important. That's not the fun part. The fun part is the code. So the first step is window setting. So let's scroll down to that section of the code. It's probably near the bottom. Um, if if this script is going to be able to work on multiple browsers, we need to make the window standardized. So basically this will take a window of any size and resize it to be appropriate. So like it, it knows where to click and stuff. Um, but I mean, after that, we are on to the main loop. So it's going to be continuously uh, re-entering the boss over and over again. First, we're gonna apply buffs. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure where we are in the script. There might be a little setup time, but basically the buffs last 15 minutes. For now, we're just going to apply buffs every single time it loops, and that's definitely in time for the 15 minutes. For this particular one, the idea would be all three of us in the clan, so me, Satch, and Jess, would be running this script simultaneously and we would each be applying different buffs to each other. So, okay, you can see here a buff just got applied. And I'm, I'm not the mastermind behind this plan. Uh, again, I'm not very familiar with the game, but you know this is what I was told to implement, so I went and did it. Um, and that's very simple. That's just sending a few keystrokes. Oh, and also, or that rage meter that was talked about before. Um, this is a little setup to do a rage because you send the two down keystroke which will hold down two until the rage meter is filled up all the way to the top and then it will send an upstroke thereby releasing the key and the rage would be applied on the two which is rock armor and I think that gives like extra boost to defense which is just helpful because like we just don't want to die like that's all we really want like damage per second isn't really a big deal as much as just making sure that we have enough defense that dying isn't an issue. And then like later, we can focus on optimizing and for time. So, okay, done. Prepare entrance. This is actually an interesting script because we need these three buzz saws to be killed before we can enter the boss chamber. But this guy is actually a random event, which isn't there all the time. And his name is Buzzkill. Um, he actually can't be killed. You have to be a lower level to kill him. And I'm not entirely sure how that works. I wrote this detect targeted animated function. And what this is going to do is detect for... I wrote this detect targeted animated function. What this is going to do is look for this image right here. So at the start of this function, it selects a new enemy and then checks to see if Buzzsaw or Buzzkill are currently selected. These are the only two enemies that are going to be in this area. If nothing happens, you just go straight to the boss fight. The power of these functions is I don't have to guess to like ex expect there to be any enemies here. It, it could be possible that somebody else, since it is multiplayer, somebody else comes in this area, kills them, and if I'm doing like a loop of three times to kill the three enemies, I might not get all three. Like. And if I don't do enough damage somehow, like this is a really, really nice function, which is going to help us a lot going forward. So if, if it's buzzkill, you just shift past it. Otherwise, send Q, which is a ranged ring. In my case, it's a gun. And then select the next enemy and keep looping. If buzzkill is selected multiple times, then we know that it has selected the next enemy and the next enemy is itself. So then we can move on. So those are our those are our two functions for prepare entrance. So again, we need each of the three buzz saws to be killed before we can enter the room. So I can go ahead and show that again. 
here the here's the script running. Uh, here's here's my buffs being applied. Now it presses shift, it hits Q. Uh, you can see my guy is shooting. And it shift over the buzz kill. It went back and saw that there was still something there. Now it's gonna loop three times and move on to the next segment, which is pro or enter sawmill. So that's really easy. I'm not even gonna go over it. It just clicks here, clicks here, clicks here. Um, and there you go. Now they don't have the script yet, so they're just gonna be pretending and just kind of doing what the script is doing. So at this point, um, we're going to go in this, <laughs> doing some emotes, I guess. They're going to go in this corner and the enemies won't spawn unless you move to the center. So I just move to the center and then click right here to move in this spot. And then from here on out, we're just fighting these guys. So I guess I can explain the strategy for the actual boss fight. These boss rooms have basically like several rounds of normal enemies, and then there's gonna be a mini boss, and then some more rounds, and then a final boss. So the way we're approaching this one is by using the fourth spell slot, which is called Fire Rain. This ring does an area of effect damage, and we're just going to bank up in the corner right there, wait for all the enemies to gang up on us, and then use the ring. So that's what this fight sawmill function does. It sends R, which is Fire Rain, and then selects another enemy. And then it's gonna also send Q, which is a ranged attack. This is in case that they're out of range because we noticed that there was a very small chance that Fire Rain didn't, um, like wasn't targeting some monsters. So the Q is just to ensure that if something's out of range for some reason, it, it will get destroyed 100%. We're gonna keep looping over Fight Sawmill until Mama Saw is detected. Mama Saw is the boss fight, or the mini boss, before the real boss. So then we're gonna break out of the loop and go into a Mama Saw loop where we're basically just gonna use all, our, all of our abilities. We're gonna spam it until it's dead. And notice that I don't send shift this whole time. We're gonna to continue to be locked onto Mama Saw so that we won't attack any other enemies until it's dead. So because I'm not sending shift, it's not going to lose focus. It's okay. We already know from here that it's been targeted. So then in case like W and E are melee attacks. So my guy will move it around. So we're going to call position again to re put ourselves in the spot and then do another loop. Actually here, here's a good example because Mama Saw has just spawned. So now we're going to see that I'm going to spam Q, W, E. Like you can see people are using W, uh, the swords. I'm yeah, here I'm using them all. And now I'm repositioning myself. So just like, just like as described. I guess I can like skip a little bit until Papa Saw cause Papa Saw is the exact same strategy as Mama Saw. We're gonna detect until it appears, here it appears. Uh, I'm in the fight sawmill thing and I'm pressing shift. There we go, I've detected it. I hit Q. Now I should be spamming all my abilities. Let's wait for that to happen. Yeah, it takes, it take, it takes a bit of cooldown. But here I am, using everything. And the fight's over. So now that it's detected, it's gonna wait a bit for all the stuff to get collected. And then I'm clicking on this spot to leave. display the boss kill number and now it's looping all the way back again so I'm doing the apply buffs repair entrance enter sawmill etc for the future some different boss areas because like now I have this function which is huge and I've got this function which is also huge because I think other bosses also use a similar kind of entrance area all I have to do is rename these things, maybe change a few coordinates, and it's already pretty good to work on another another boss fight, which is it's really cool. This is a lot of the hard work's already done for me here. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty proud with this, and I hope that in 17 minutes I can cut together not 17 minutes of stuff.